Chadlail was born on June 6, 1982 and would go on to serve for the US Army in Iraq. He would make his professional wrestling debut in the year 2000 under the name of Shatter, with that name then being adjusted to Phil Shatter. He would spend the next decade working across the indie scene, mainly wrestling for NWA Anarchy and other promotions across Georgia and the Carolinas. He won the NWA Anarchy Heavyweight Championship as well as the NWA National Championship, the latter of which he held for two years and is the all-time longest reigning champion. He made an appearance on a Ring of Honor pay-per-view in 2010 and also in 2010 10 would begin sporadically appearing in TNA Wrestling. He began using the name of Gunner and would appear alongside Murphy, playing the roles of TNA security guards and occasional wrestlers. And Hogan must have saw something in these guys because they would start appearing on TV a lot and they would join the Immortal Stable, which at the time was the biggest thing in TNA. At February 2011's Against All Odds pay-per-view, Gunner would wrestle his first TNA pay-per-view match, a six-man tag, himself Murphy and Rob Terry against James Storm, Robert Roode and Scott Steiner, which sounds like the most one-sided match of all time. Gunner and his team would of course lose the match, and is there a single person who would have wanted otherwise? Gunner was signed to a full-time TNA contract in 2011, and from here, we would go on to see this guy every single week on TV, and he would go from being a security guard into a member of the active roster, and like I said, he was on TV every single week. On the March 17th, 2011 edition of TNA Impact, Gunner would defeat Murphy and Rob Terry in a three-way match to win the vacant TNA Television Championship, in a move that really came out of nowhere and was probably only done to get more gold within the Immortal group. He defended the title against Daniels once before losing it to Eric Young in May of 2010 in a 15-second match, and the TV title was truly dead by that point. He would stick around in TNA for a few more years, mainly as a mid-card member of Immortal, but when Immortal ended, and more specifically when Hulk Hogan was gone from the company entirely, there wasn't really much else for Gunner to do in TNA. He had a four-month tag title reign with James Storm in 2013, but that's about the last notable thing that Gunner did in TNA for following the split of Immortal and before he would officially finish up with the company in June of 2015 and depart from TNA Wrestling. He would return to the independent scene before in 2017 he was signed by the WWE. It was reported on May 29th 2017 that Chad Lale had signed a developmental deal for the WWE and the very next month he was working the NXT house show circuit under his real name of Chad Lale. And he would continue exclusively on the house show scene for quite a while. He would actually wrestle on the house show scene all the way until August of 2018. He signed for WWE in May 2017, but August of 2018 is when he finally got his first NXT TV appearance. And by that point though, Leo had a whole new identity in the WWE. He was now called Jackson Riker, and he'd begun appearing alongside Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler on house shows, calling themselves the Forgotten Sons. The Forgotten Sons would begin appearing as a trio in NXT when they made their debut as a trio in September of 2018. And uh, yeah, they were just an awkward fit in NXT to say the least. NXT, of course, already at the time, had a top heel stable in the Undisputed Era, and that made it very hard for the Forgotten Sons to stand out and break out from the crowd in NXT. Jackson Riker acted as the muscle of the group, where Steve and Blake were the ones mainly wrestling as a tag team, and Jackson Riker was portrayed as being a fairly strong character in the WWE at first. He would only wrestle singles matches occasionally, and while the Forgotten Sons as a duo or a trio would often be on the losing side of matches, Jackson Riker all the way until 2019 had never been pinned or submitted in singles competition, but that would be broken and shattered by Tyler Breeze in June of 2019, who beat him in a three-minute match. And then from there, himself and the Forgotten Sons were very rarely on the winning side when they did wrestle on TV. They were pretty much a certified jobber trio in NXT. And even so, they were hardly ever wrestling on TV. On the April 10th, 2020 edition of WWE SmackDown though, the Forgotten Sons would make their main roster debut, probably because they didn't know what to do with them in NXT. 
And hey, the Forgotten Sons actually debuted very strong. They first defeated the Lucha House Party, and then they defeated the tag champions, The New Day, leading to them challenging for the titles in a four-way tag match at Money in the Bank that year, where they were unsuccessful. So far, so good though. A good start to life on the main roster for the Forgotten Sons, and they've already done more than they ever did in NXT. But that good start for the Forgotten Sons would actually be the end of the Forgotten Sons. That match and Money in the Bank was Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake's final ever WWE match. And it was all because of a single tweet. On June 2nd, 2020, Jackson Riker tweeted the following. Thankful for the President of the United States we have. God bless America. Built of freedom, forgotten no more. And this was obviously tweeted during a very heated political climate, obviously during the pandemic and the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, two things I'm not going to talk about because I dread to read the comments. And this tweet got Jackson Riker a lot of heat from the rest of the WWE locker room, with other wrestlers in the WWE publicly responding to him on Twitter. Mustafa Ali responded saying, I'm thankful you posted this because I'm now aware of what you stand for. When black brothers and sisters are crying, you praise someone that refuses to acknowledge their hurt. Kevin Owens responded to him saying, The freedom you speak of entitles you to speak your mind all you want. I'm not here to argue that. I just really need to tell you that I think you pushing your shitty wrestling catchphrase as all of this is happening is absolutely fucking pathetic. Good night. There was responses from Batista, Sami Zayn, Ricochet, as well as numerous others, and safe to say, Jackson Riker was in a lot of shit. And as a result, the Forgotten Sons were taken off of WWE television. And while Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake were eventually released in February 2021, Jackson Riker would remain in the company and would begin appearing on Raw in December 2020, aligned with Elias. It was a very random alliance, was never really explained why it was happening, and of course, it never went anywhere. Elias turned on Riker in May of 2021, thus turning Jackson Riker face for the first time in his WWE stint. A very bold move by the WWE given all the controversy he'd been surrounding in, and also just a very random move in general. Jackson Riker or Gunner, or whatever he worked as, was never usually a babyface. The feud between Jackson Riker and Elias would finish following Riker defeating Elias in a strap match, and then in a Symphony of Destruction match. And then after this, Jackson Riker became a mainstay of main event. Meaning yes, that entire Elias feud and program was a complete and colossal waste of time. His final match on Raw took place on the 27th of September 2021, losing to Karrion Cross in just a couple of minutes, and his final WWE appearance was on a main event episode in November before he was released from the company that same month on the 18th. Since being released, Jackson Riker returned to the independent scene, but would only be wrestling occasionally after his return. In fact, according to Cage Match, he has only wrestled five matches since his 2021 November release. Only five matches in a year and a half. As well as this, it's also been announced by Jackson Riker himself that this will be his last year in professional wrestling. He recently announced that he'll be wrestling his retirement match and his final match in professional wrestling this year in August in his home state of South Carolina. 